Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry Option. This is video number 19 in the series and this one just the introduction to saponification. So saponification is a chemical reaction involving the conversion of fats or oils um, into glycerol and the salt of a fatty acid. And this is usually done in the presence of uh, sodium hydroxide. Now, um, the, I guess where this fits most closely is our study of esters. We know that esters are compounds which are formed between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid or an alkanoic acid. And that forms a substance which we know as an ester. Now, glycerol is an alcohol. Uh, it's a derivative of uh, propane, but it has three OH groups on it. So it's a triol, propane one, two, three triol. So it would look something like this. I'll leave the hydrogens off because I can't sort of fit them in. Um, and so it's the, uh, from each of these OH groups, we can form an ester link to a series of alkanoic acids. Usually, of course, they're the same one. Um, so they're uh, often called triglycerides, uh, and that would be the formation of your most common fats or oils. The presence of sodium hydroxide actually breaks that ester bond. Um, we do get water as a product. We get uh, we get glycerol, sorry, as a product, and we also get uh, the salt, the sodium salt of the um, um, acid. Ion, uh, anion uh, effectively so it's so soaps are kind of like a, um, a salt I guess if you like of um, a fatty acid so we're going to look at a couple of these in a little bit of detail one example might be um, methyl octadecanoate so um, 8 and 10 18 um, uh, carbons all together in this particular one with a methyl group attached um, in combination with the sodium hydroxide, which forms the sodium salt, uh, and then methanol. So here's going to be your break um, between your um, ester, which has one carbon on the alcohol side, and 18 on the uh, acid side. The break occurs there. We get our, our um, alcohol returning, and the uh, salt of the organic acid over here, which is our soap. Okay, Let's see if we can make that a little clearer. So what we tend to do is we select a fat or an oil. Commonly, these are uh, animal or plant fats. Okay, just with different uh, melting, boiling temperatures. We combine them with a the base, most commonly sodium hydroxide, in order to form the alcohol, the glycerol and also then the uh, salt, which is the soap. Soaps are good for lathering in water. They uh, create things called emulsions, which we're going to look at a little bit later in a, in a later video. Uh, and also they dissolve oils and grease, allow things which are normally immiscible, which means they don't mix, don't mix together in water. Um, to allow them to mix together so that they form a, um, a solution or a suspension, at least uh, something that uh, uh, allows, I mean a colloid, allows the um, particles to be more evenly distributed uh, rather than separating out into two different layers. Some of the fats and oils that are used in soap making, if we look at the animal fats first, so things like lard is a pig fat. Uh, and it can be used for soaps that are used for uh, laundry uses. Um, tallow is another fat, and it's more related to cows or cattle. Uh, and they tend to be uh, more yellowy types of soaps. These are the kind of the traditional soaps, uh, the way that soaps uh, used to be made. As far as the oils, and so if, if the fats are the ones that are more associated with animals, uh, oils are the ones that are more associated with plants. In addition, most of these fats are what we call saturated fats, and we already know that saturated and unsaturated uh, relates to the bonding between the carbons in the chain. Um, the plants are often unsaturated, or if there's lots and lots of them, they might be polyunsaturated, 
and that will indicate the presence of double bonds, for example, in the chain. Avocado oils using the manufacture of cosmetics, castor oil produces a fairly mild um, sort of a soap and olive oil, a harder soap, but one that is a little bit more durable. Different types of fats and oils have been experimented with in order to determine which are the best ones, which ones will produce good long lasting soaps. One final thing which we'll go through in class, because I'll get you to actually make uh, soap in the laboratory, um, is just a comparison between the industrial preparation of a soap and the school laboratory preparation of a soap. Obviously, in an industrial chemistry topic, we want to look at the high um, uh, production, high yield idea that we have in industrial chemistry all the time. So we can, we can very simply use just an ester in the laboratory, um, just to give you an idea of the process. We've carried out refluxing before, so we know how that process works. Um, we can actually use ice to cool down the uh, soap, precipitate it, and that can often uh, help us to gather the soap together. Um, if there's some immiscibility, we can use a separating funnel. Um, it's a quick process. You're, you'll be able to see something forming um, uh, in the laboratory in a relatively short period of time, but it's very impure. It's not a great, certainly wouldn't be washing my hands with it or my clothes. Um, and we tend to precipitate it out using a fairly high concentration of um, sodium chloride and brine. It can also be carried out at relatively low and safe temperatures in the school laboratory. But industrially, it requires a little bit more. We substitute the ester with a fat or an oil. Um, we don't have to do the refluxing, but the process is carried out much slower um, over a much longer period of time um, and uh, with a 30% sodium hydroxide um, solution, so fairly high. Um, and that, of course, is quite caustic. Concentrated brine will salt out the curves at the top of the mixture. You'll see that happen in the laboratory, but at a very sort of much lower level. Um, and industrially, you want to perfume, um, add sort of different fragrances to the soaps that give them that nice smell. Um, and industrially, too, we also recover the alcohol, the glycerol that's produced, um, because it's also a useful process. And purity, as you would expect industrially, is also much higher. Um, this is a process we'll carry out in the school laboratory, uh, so I'll talk about this a little bit more when we do that there. Um, that's all for this one, so thanks for watching.